edition of the Ask the Trainers video. I'm Rachel and this is Karen. We're both launch consultants here at the city office and I have a box, or we have a box here, full of questions that you've posted here on City Builders that we want to answer a few of them today. Alright, what policies can a church put in place to best use sharing to the church group? Great question. Um, with this, what I always look at when we are setting up policies, anytime we're using a communication tool that we want the whole body to use, um, I try to stay away from policies. Policies kind of dictate what not to do, as opposed to educating the church body on what they can do. So what I would do with this is I would look at the opportunities that we would normally be sharing to the church group. So we'd look at the main church group and say, what do we want this group to be about and then from there we can work backwards and decide what needs to be shared from other groups. Oftentimes your networking groups are probably going to be the most um, the groups that share the most. For example your men's ministry, your women's ministry, parents um, that are in a group from your children's ministry, um, business opportunities, things like that that would happen in more of the common interest groups that we want to almost advertise and make sure that the church body knows exist. Um, those are groups that we would probably share. Same thing with small groups. If we had an event that we were sharing, um, a barbecue, a get together, something like that, we might share those to the main church group. Bottom line, when you're sharing that information or when you're setting up your structure, we want to have documentation that teaches the group leaders and the group participants, this is how you share content not specifically a list of times when you don't share content. Right, so maybe strategy is a better word than policy. Yes. So it's more like this is what we want to do instead of, like you said, what we don't want to do. So just in case you're brand new to the city and you're not really sure what we're talking about when we say share, there is when you create content in a group. So let's say you're a group leader of a service group. And uh, when you create a need, you can say, allow this post to be shared, and then you can choose another group to share it to so it would show up in that group as well. So um, an example is that if you're posting a need like that you're trying to recruit volunteers for, you post it to the service opportunities page because that's one central place that people can look to see what they can serve. But if you really wanna advertise it outside of your service group, you can choose allow this post to be shared and then choose a church group some a group leader in the church group would appro then approve if it would actually post in that church group so that's how it works functionally but yes I think events think through the cu culture the appropriate content that you want in the church group because everybody that's on the city is going to be in that group so you don't want to make it too noisy you want to be strategic again in, in what's posted in that group. So it'll be part of the conversation you as a staff wanna um, have before you come up with that strategy to then teach your group leaders what. So. Great, next question. What is a good friend strategy for pastors? <laughs> um, so again, I think the foundation of that question is understanding what friends actually mean on the city. So if you're a friend with someone, so the, the places it comes into play are you can choose to only allow friends to see your phone number or address, um, friends see your status update, updates, or um, any public journal entries. Are there any other places friends really there's come into play? Kind of a cheat sheet if you wanted to share content with a, a specific friend. Um, that's kind of buried in there, but those are really the key things. Right. So when you think about the pastor, keep that in mind. So if your pastor is going to utilize status updates a lot, maybe he ties status updates to, tw to his Twitter or Facebook, um, then maybe it's a good idea for that you just kind of open up the friend request. In account settings under notifications, he can choose accept all, so he's not getting a bunch of email notifications clicking yes, I approve, I approve, it can just accept all. Um, or you can choose reject all. But 
I mean, if your pastor hates people, then maybe they would want to choose the option to reject all. Right. No, I'm just kidding. Um, If you select the option to reject all, it just takes away the option for somebody to make that friend request. Um, Having the pastor do that does sort of um, subliminally, I guess, communicate that we don't use the friend feature on the city. So keep in mind what the pastor is doing is what other people are going to do. So making decisions based on that um, kind of weigh the pros and the cons. Um, I usually will tell people, just like Rachel said, if you accept all, it avoids having to get an email reminder or an email generated every time somebody tries to friend you. Um, It also does create a little bit more open environment. We are using the word friend, and I think people do tend to associate that both with online terminology, but in real life, if if we're not friends, you know, why why are we connected here? So, I think that's something to take into account as well. Next question. Yep. How have you seen churches use the city buddies concept well? I think um, so. City buddies that. That phrase came up, uh, gosh, a couple of years ago, a church brought it up to us um, that this is what they were doing to help um, less tech-savvy people get involved with what's going on on the city. common question that we get is, the city is great for people that know how to use technology, but what happens to those that don't have a computer or a smartphone? And so a church introduced us to this concept of city buddies and that's we have somebody who is good with technology, they are plugged in on the city, who is dedicated and and connected to somebody who isn't. Now, that city buddy can either help that person learn technology, teach them how to set up a a generic, easy to use Gmail account so that they can stay in contact with family and friends, plus get their city messages, or that person can be the point person for any content that comes through the city to deliver it in a format that they're accustomed to. I think one thing to consider when matching up city buddies with that person without a computer is that the groups, the real life groups that that person that needs a city buddy is in. You know, maybe someone, if they're in multiple, you know, real life groups at your church that also have a group on the city, is maybe they end up having two city buddies that it's just someone in that group that is, you know, knows I am going to keep John informed on anything that happens in this group. And it doesn't need to be like, you know, every day that that person gets a daily digest or a post that they're calling that person. Maybe it's a check-in, you know, once a week that they can call that person or if they're going to see him on Sunday, they just, you know, hey, these are the things. But if it is something important, like a prayer request, yes, that's an, that's an immediate phone call to keep them informed. So it, you don't want it to be something that's annoying to either person, but that it just kind of actually creates a cool relationship between the two. Yeah, it really is using the technology to build a real-life relationship. That's important to note, too, with the City Buddies. They can be long-term or short-term. It might be a six-week relational project um, to help that person transition to using technology Mm -hmm. and giving a safe place for somebody to learn what's going on, or it could be more long-term like what Rachel had described. Mm. How can the men and women only options best be used? Okay, so the, when you create a post on the city, you will notice if you are a woman that you'll see women only as an op- as an advanced option. If you're a man, you would see men only. So um, it's not that you're not seeing you know both options like there's something wrong. It's on purpose, and so that is because we want to give you the opportunity to actually create a women only or a men only post that people can trust that only women are seeing it. So. Uh, You could use it where instead of having a women's group on the city, you could just choose that women-only option in your church-level group so you know everyone that's on the city. You choose women-only. That means literally all the women in your church that are on the city would see that post. 
so you can advertise you know things or have a conversation around gender specific items I think it's really important to understand what do you want to get out of the post as well so if we are wanting to spark a conversation in a safe place where it's only women speaking or only men speaking we would use that that particular post um, if we're trying to get every all of the women involved in a book study um, do we need to limit that to women only potentially yes but we could also post that church-wide so that husbands can be encouraging their wives to also get involved in this and it can be a, a broader audience for that if that's more of an announcement um, we wouldn't necessarily need to limit it if we're trying to facilitate more discussion and safe place we might want to limit it to gender mm -hmm. same thing with promotions you have the option to post a promotion to women only or men only so you could go either way with that one too for a, a men's retreat do you want to make it so everyone can see it so the wives can't can tell their husbands about it mm -hmm. or you could post it to men only it just depends the strategy that you have great question all right, well, I was about to share one more question with you, but I was told that we need to wait until next month's Ask the Trainer for this one. So you guys will have to check out check it out next time for that one. Um, for this time around, thanks so much for these questions. Keep posting the questions in Church to Church. You can tweet them to us. You can send emails to training at onthecity.org. We'd be happy to um, unpack any of these concepts for you. Thanks so much for your time. Take a picture of that. <laughs> nope. You took a video of that. That's even better. Just providing footage for the outtakes. I was sitting in so, the hair and makeup trailer so, this morning. So, <laughs> so, so. We should wrap those books in Christmas wrapping paper for it. Yeah. City builders, do you have <laughs> a sleeping bag snuggie? That's just what the world <laughs> needs. That's Wait, isn't that what it is? <laughs> Today. You're quick. You're quick on your mind. <laughs> you are quick on your mind.